toughest single day mountain bike race in the world. No matter where you go in the world, every town, village, city has a day where they celebrate. Um, a community celebration where they celebrate what they do, and this is what we do here. We, uh, we go big, we bike, we hike, uh, we do it all. I'm looking forward to finishing already, and um, I'm looking forward to having the maybe yo-yo effect of, um, am I really gonna go on, and then being like, I'm gonna go on. It's 4 o'clock on the first Friday in August, 2001. The 15th annual Montezuma's Revenge 24-hour mountain bike race begins. Loop 1, the first of the S&M loops. One mile, 168 vertical feet climbed. Just a small taste of what's to come. A total of 32 racers, including four former champions from this year's field. The basic concept of the race is to ride for the entire 24 hours and cover as many loops, total miles, and elevation gain as one person possibly can. All in all, if you completed the entire list of loops, you would have ridden to the top of Mount Everest and partway back down. It is a race of endurance. Eric Helgoth and everyone else knows that. An early lead and being out front means nothing. In a 24-hour race like Montezuma's Revenge, no lead is ever safe. Rule number one for the competitors, any component, handlebar, tires, etc., may be changed out at any time, but the competitor must begin and end with the absolute same bike frame. The favorites, course record holder and 99 champion, Rishi Graywall. Another former champion, David Pickett Heaps, also in the field, as is Joey Klein. For the women, Michelle Granger, twice the runner-up. This time, she's out for victory. Two of the favorites take an early lead, heading out in the loop number two. An early surprise pursuer, Chad Sigler, the Montezuma rookie. For the first three loops, the riders will stay relatively close together, seconds apart, not minutes or hours. But as the 24 hours continues, the gaps can grow significantly. Loop two and the river crossing. Chad Sigler uses the local's bridge to maintain his third place standing. Dawes Wilson behind him, a longtime extreme competitor at an astounding 48 years old. Powell Clark in his second Montezuma's Revenge in fifth. Cullen Barker, quote unquote, enjoying his sixth Montezuma's Revenge, all that's missing from his resume, a first place finish. Ahead of the pack, Rishi Graywall, a former World Cup and World Championship competitor. David Pickett heaps a machine on a bicycle. Michelle Granger, the first woman to reach the river. The 2001 Montezuma's Revenge in and around Montezuma, Colorado. 
being brought to you by Paul Mitchell, the style in lifestyle sports. And by New Belgium Brewing Company, brewers of fat tire. And go over the bar with handlebarandgrill.com. Coming up, more mountain bike fun in and around Montezuma. Seventy miles west of Denver lies Montezuma, Colorado, 10,400 feet above sea level, surrounded by the Continental Divide, the perfect place for what has been called the world's worst mountain bike race. Rishi Graywall, a former champion, out in the lead, but just a few miles and a few thousand vertical feet into this 24-hour mountain bike odyssey. Loop number three, known as the S&M Loop Three. Oh, yeah. Three miles, 856 in elevation climb. David Pickett Heaps, the man some call the machine, staying tight with Graywall. Already an hour in, Graywall looks like it's a casual three hour ride. Howdy. Howdy. Oh, hello. One of the most critical skills needed is bike handling on the downhills, where scree, jagged rocks, and debris is a minefield that could easily scrape, maim, and injure. Rhythm and proper gear selection on the crank uphill is also essential to maintain strength and endurance over the 24 hours of Montezuma's Revenge. Weather, food, hydration, mechanic skills, and equipment will also play factor. In the women's field on the uphill climb, Colleen Inkin, former champion at age 37, trying to regain that glory. One hour down, 23 to go. Former champions Rishi Graywall and David Pickett Heaps lead the pack. For the women, two time second place finisher Michelle Granger in first. Followed by former champion Colin right, Inkin. In, in from loop three, in, ready, ready to head out Rishi. to loop four, Rishi Graywall. 
Strategy going well? Uh, I can't say at this point. Just have to wait my minute and keep going. But, uh, Dave, this is guys. Yeah, get her down. Entrans in here. Extrans in here. Water's in here. What else you need? How's your seat coach? Uh, see, I feel I just try to pace myself, you know. It's all riding your own ride. That's what it's all about. Are you fresh and strong? Yeah. My muscles are slowly waking up. I mean, I haven't been taking an easy week, so. Um, yeah, I got to get going. All right. My main goal is just to keep a good pace. I'm feeling good. I'm keeping a real easy pace. So that's it. I'm not out riding hard at all, so. I just want to maintain, you won't need those maintain, uh, you know, my uh, my speed, I guess. You're good to go whenever you're ready. All right. Okay, Chad, you got Thanks, Chad. Good luck. You got two bottles? Chad. Loop four, the night loop underway. 66 miles of stream, Jeep road, and steep hill. 8,510 in elevation climb to add to the 856 already logged including 10 miles of grueling mountain biking. I vote for Rookie of the Year. Behind Dan is our infamous Gary Begley riding POV helmet cam. I, I was off for a month in June, so just got to see what my body can do. So you're, you're physically feeling okay now, yeah, mentally? Yeah, great. All right. Yeah. Any good luck. Should I go? Loop four of the 2001 Montezuma's Revenge underway. First big challenge, Radical Hill. Hundreds of vertical feet above the valley floor. Rishi Graywall, a current leader, off the bike and pushing. Behind guy. him, a move in positioning. Number Steve six guy just moved into moves third. into third. Well, Scott's got them up there. Loop four will yes. thin the proximity of the riders to each other and will weed out any pretenders. How do you feel so far? Oh, uh, real good. My muscles feel pretty lazy. It's taking a while to warm up, but that's all right. Just more attacks later. Only two hours in, but already fatigue beginning to take its toll. How are you doing, bud? How are you feeling now? Oh, fine. Oh, it's pretty up here. Have a good race. I took the switch back. Yeah, it's a little easier for me. Just spin the legs, hike on the road. Yeah. Glad the weather held up. Not too bad, it looks over there, but hey, off we go. See ya. How are you feeling so far? So far, so good. How many more hours? <laughs> 22? <laughs> yeah, so far, so good. Super, we're on top of the world, right? How was hiking up the switchbacks? Oh, wonderful. <laughs> nice little break of riding. Looking forward to some good down here. Checkpoint 41, and Rishi Graywall reaches it at 6.26 p.m., but barely one-eighth of the way into Montezuma's Revenge. At this point, the riders are required to fix their bikes up and themselves 
for the nighttime ride. David Pickett Heath arrives a few short moments later, still in second place. Graywall senses the urgency. We see it, Dave. Uh -huh. Hanging in there. Defending champion Thane Wright on the other side of the handlebars this year, offering advice to David Pickett. Are you riding with him, Thane? Why don't you start pedaling? Okay. We're going to do the road wheels at the pavement, okay? Right. And the push out for another former champion. Defending champion, not in this race. Can you tell me why? Haven't had the time to put in the miles that I would have liked this year. Uh, and uh, I guess traditionally I've taken a year off or two in between. And it's, it's nice to be on the other side and, and support the guys. 6.43 p.m. Daz Wilson and Steve Fastbinder have switched positions, but roll in wheel to wheel in third and fourth. Good. Okay. You got that? You got that? Yeah, I got a quick turnaround. Oh, rolls out a few minutes later. There, now yeah. in fourth right, place. Cool. Okay. Thanks. What number is that? 15. 15. So far, so good. Smooth, good weather, looking dry. Um, rain might be coming in. Uh, Rishi Graywall is definitely setting the pace. Pickett Heap's about a minute behind him. It's going to be a sick, sick race. Women's leader, Michelle Granger, arrives at 7.01 p.m. Actually, I feel really good. I don't know where my pacer ran went, but <laughs> I'm hydrated. Um, I've been eating, sort of. Well, I've been eating. <laughs> um, I actually, I feel good. I'm not even use this. I don't think I'm going to be able to. Why did you just take one little bite? Okay, see ya. Yeah. 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 Anything's possible in this thing. 20 people can catch me on grades. You could die on grades, buddy. How you feeling, though, for uh, coming back into it, Hat? I feel a little weak, but I'm all right. Coming up, day turns to night. Seven sixteen p.m. Dusk and rain showers beset the current 2001 Montezuma's Revenge leader, Rishi Graywall. Ahead of him, the Peaks Trail, nine miles of rugged single track for a leader with a support rider now in tow. Fred, you gonna radio us? Right, yeah. oh, yeah. On the bottom. Seven twenty-one p.m. Five minutes behind Graywall, David Pickett Heath continues to breathe down the leader's neck. Dawes Wilson, the 48-year-old bail rider, regains third place. Todd Murray, a decade younger, learned about this race from watching it on TV three years ago, now in his third Montezuma's Revenge in fourth. I run it a lot last year, but not much this year. <laughs> Cut up. It's a little slippery. Jeez. How's it going? It's going. Oh. Behind the lead five in the deep woods darkness, a crash. Pass right there.
Sometimes the riders move so fast you forget they're self-propelled. A collection of parts and gear driven by muscle, lung, oh, I got dirt in my mouth. Do you want me to clean okay. your glasses you for you? Could be out of taste. Pull it out and just take a look. You need to drink that now. But it's getting dark now anyway, too. I'm hiding. Just going to see how long I can hang. Cool. So far, so good. So far. It's just getting fun now, right? Yeah. This is when I start to get my buddies to go with me. miles in, 150 to go, and there is the leaderboard. For the women, Michelle Granger still on top. This is uh, one of Rishi's brake pads at this check stop. If you look closely, he's burned through it already. Brake pads usually last about a thousand miles or so, sometimes less, sometimes more. He's ridden about eight hours on this one, has already burned through it, so. We got him replaced, he's good to go. He's getting cleaned up and uh, fueled up and he'll be on the trail here in just a second. Oh. In the race. Yeah. There's no one up there. Is he? No. He's leading. Yeah. Uh, you ready? Good yeah. job. You got the pack? Yeah. Good job. All right, you guys, tear it up. Yeah. Rishi Graywall in the lead. Ahead, what separates this race from all other 24-hour races. A climb. Yeah. 14,270 <laughs> foot. Raise people. Well, thanks. Yeah. See you guys. The 2001 Montezuma's Revenge. David Pickett Heaps with a ride to Ruby Gold Cabin. At 1.03 a.m., here he'll gear up for his final ascent to the top of Gray's Peak. That's Dave. All righty, brother. Yee 1.54 a.m., Michelle Granger comes in from loop four, still in first place for the women. Yeah, I am. I did a lot of hiking this year, and I'm really psyched to so go I'm hike. Hiker. I'm hiking a lot faster than I've ever hiked. Which is probably why I wasn't that slow on a rep because I hiked it all. Every time I got on my bike, I careened off, so... Red flag. Uh, that's not right. Yeah, this is your pack right here. Cool. Sweet. You guys already up top? Uh, I think... 
Oh, train. support is key. Yeah. Carrying stuff, lightening the load, companionship, safety. Yeah. Uh, I think if uh, if support was not allowed, I'm not sure whether I'd do this. Because that's what really makes it fun and special. And a lot safer. Daz Wilson with a quick check at Ruby Gold Cabin now takes out on loop five to head to the top of the grays, moving into third place. A quick changeover and a good support crew will need you greatly. Right here, right here. Derek kind of took over your space. Okay. What do you say, Colleen? <laughs> Starting to get tired. <laughs> We're glad yeah. you're racing again. Thanks. Feeling okay though? Yeah, comes in waves, you know. About five minutes behind me. 2.28 a.m. and a huge okay. surprise. Okay. Rishi Graywall has reached the top of Gray's Peak in record time. Adios. Adios, she sets man. for his descent. Route finding, all important under the cover of darkness. Approximately 10 minutes past. David Pickett Heaps, also on the top of Gray's in, in record time. He's, uh, he was here like 10 minutes ago. How you doing, dude? <laughs> Not bad. kicking butt. Considering I... he's broken yeah, a chain, yeah. all, we had to replace his derailleur, <laughs> replace the derailleur cable. <laughs> I'd say offhand. I went 10 miles out of my way. I'd say offhand. <laughs> I did more mileage sure. than anyone to this point. Yeah, I how, how did you go lost. out of your way so much? Because <laughs> I was checking out the scenery. Well, he's a manly man, too. I mean, he's got to <laughs> Number 30. So how long ago were Rishi and uh, David? Yeah. Good, thanks. Thanks, hey. you guys. Yeah. Fire and tender must have just pulled in. He's out of here at 342. 41. Hi there. Howdy. Could I have uh, some of your signatures? Uh, Number 28. Pretty good. I'm tired. That last bit up Loveland Pass and then up um, Lane Away was tough. Excellent. Thank you very much. Yes, you may continue. You have until sunrise to uh, leave for Grace. Okay, well, actually, I'm leaving right now. I'm just. That's just... quite all right. Just okay. let me know when you leave. And you have someone hiking with you, too. Yes, I do. All right, excellent. Super. 43 okay. a.m. of Rishi Graywall off of Grace Peak, alive and well. On the downhill, he has opened up a bigger gap on Pickett Heaps. Oh, it was a tough, a tough night on Gray's Peak, guys. That sucker is like, I just haven't spent a lot of time at altitude and get a little hypoxic. And not only that, I got a guy just chasing me like, like the Dickens, you know? I'll just keep going and yep. we'll call it a fork day. on the backside of Radical Hill. All right, right, right on, Richie. Gray right Wall with a quick in and out, maintain the record. Number five. Woo! He'll bring over the board really good, unless you want to come in. Name? Steve. Yeah. Last name? Take this off for a second. Okay. Last finder. There was that huge cloud coming up. I thought it was going to turn into something nasty, but fortunately it didn't. He's in there too. Yeah. Uh, I've got other, other food Look like that with favorite. me. My favorite. Thanks, you guys. See ya. Okay, he's out of here. 409 27. Oh, down. <laughs> 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 
Yes. No food at all? Do you want some breakfast when you come back in or no? Yeah. Do you have the eggs and stuff? We'll get everything together. Okay, baby. Go get them. All right, Dave. Go, 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 go. He's in good spirits. He's strong. He's got a level head. He's in. He's out. Quick changes are really important. And uh, well, I don't know. Wow. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm tired. All right. It's not that bad. <laughs> it's not like you climbed a 14er. Yeah. You need anything? Less than two hours. Can I go now? You have one minute. One minute. Hal Clark. Hal Clark. Hal, you're doing a great job. Have we told you that yet? Hey, no, but thank you. Let's do this. Rock Drag roll. me down, big boy. Let's do it. Kendra, give me a towel. Uh, 5.20 a.m., Rishi Graywall out on Loop 6. 12 miles, 2,208 of elevation climb. The sunrise in the distance will revive spirit for all racers. 5.22 a.m., Dawes Wilson now well over an hour behind me. Yeah, a couple of miscues up in grays, but no. What happened? Oh, just, uh, I'm coming down. Uh, I, <clears throat> I'm not used to being up there in the dark. As the sun rises over the Rocky Mountains, the current leaderboard, with two defending champions, still on top. If you, if you went down the trail I just bounced down, nothing would rise your spirit. <laughs> it's worse going down the hills here. Bye. Bye. Figure out how far behind that guy is. Okay. The first direct rays of sunshine for David Pickett heaps. It will renew his spirit and warm his body. But he knows now he is almost one half hour behind Rishi Graywall. How you guys feeling? Oh, a little weak. This is great mountain biking. He's 48, but he's no Viagra guy, I'll tell you that. Just from the ladies I've talked to. 6.25 a.m., Michelle Granger makes the final steps to Gray's Peak, some four hours behind the men's leader. First woman up, how are you feeling? Ah, uh, miserable. Don't tell them that. It's cold. Put this on. It sucks doing it with asthma. Let yeah. me tell you. <laughs> I guess I should be glad I can do it at all. <laughs> 6 30 a.m. Hal Clark arrives and quickly departs race headquarters, now in fifth place, 93 miles into the race. Behind him, Todd Murray, him, also oh, headed to Loop God. 6 in sixth place. Like Back on top of Gray's, the bright sunshine. It's yeah, Colleen Inkin at 6.57 a.m. Oh, She's now a half hour behind yeah, Michelle Granger, the women's leader. Yes, let's seek lower, warmer land, huh? Warmer climb. <laughs> <laughs> How are you feeling now that the sun's out? Much better, yeah. Well, we've had a beautiful day, haven't we? Beautiful. Pretty fortunate. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So. Coming up, just seven hours remain. Got it. Hello. 
Got it. All right. Come on. Early in the morning and on a final ascent yeah. of grays, Yari Kirkland, a Montezuma rookie. I'm going down. I'm going to get warm. I'm going to bed. No, you can't no, sleep. No, you keep going. Don't sleep. It'll be going. over. It'll be all you over. Kidding? Going. I haven't told her the time, you know so what? I'll let her know. It's 9 o'clock. <laughs> yeah, 9 a.m. Go with that. You are going. Go, girl. Go, girl. Ooh, ooh. I see so many places. Not six. Going for it. Nine, ten. Go, 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 go. go. Yeah. Got two racers on loop eight. That would be Rishi Graywall and David Pickett Heaps. We have additionally a uh, number of racers on loop seven. That racers would be Hal Clark, Todd Murray, Steve Fassbinder, and Dawes Wilson. Then there's a large group on loop six. A uh, couple straggling in off of loop five. Looks like it will shape up to be a heck of a day. 9.24 a.m., 15 hours into the 24-hour Montezuma's Revenge. Dawes Wilson in third place on loop seven. How's it going? The biking has taken its toll on all the riders. Mentally and physically, they are exhausted. How's it going? Good, how are you feeling? Good. Yeah, everything like holding up? Bucks. Don't I look like a million bucks? <laughs> Walking like a million bucks. How's everything holding up? So far, so good. Good. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> Stick me with the fork. <laughs> I'm wasted. But I still have uh, ten, six hours to rebound. So I'm hoping. Second win? Yeah. We'll see. 10.04 a.m., Rishi Gregwall comes off of loop eight now with a one-hour lead. A lot of downhill and just going and on really steep, steep trails, but it's just good I got through it. How are you feeling mentally? You look good. You can tell about the sleep. When the sun arrives, spirits are revived. That includes former champion Joey Klon in seventh place, but surging forward on loop seven. Oh, I, I, I'm having some ups and downs, but uh, it's pretty good fun. I'm doing okay. I seem to be eating more normal food. If I eat a lot of sugar, then I, I seem to get dizzy. So uh, it's good. The bike is uh, all clogged, all clogged with mud. But uh, this next loop isn't much riding anyway. Going to altitude is killing me. How do you like my signature anymore? Oh, I can't even do it anymore. Coming with you. Okay, cool. Will you pedal up seven? Oh, uh, no. But I'll ride on the handlebars. Okay, on the downhills? Sure. Okay. And the uphill. Oh. <laughs> How you feeling now? I'm all right. It's hard at altitude. I can't breathe very well. But that so happens hard. every year. <laughs> 10.53 a.m. David Pickett Heaps arrives in second place, 49 minutes behind the record pace of Greywall. Yeah, I feel like crap, but I feel like, you know, a good... Good form of crap. <laughs> yeah, baby. You're the finest form of crap I've seen. <laughs> I wish I had a crappy day like that. Pick it heaps with a quick turnaround. At 10.56, he sets out, knowing it's a large deficit, but anything can happen in this race. You know, that was pretty stinking hard. It was a definitely loose uh, screed that I was not prepared for. But um, you get to the top, and it's 14,000 feet, and you're all kind of woozy and stuff, and you think, oh, maybe I'll just quit. And now that I'm back here, of course, I'm going to go back out. Well, you pop Okay, Todd, I got you. Okay, thank you. Todd Murray in fifth place, headed out to loop number eight. Al Clark in from loop seven in sixth place at 11.09 a.m. Uh, I know it's a little forward thinking. My feet are like, like uh, chunks of wood, so it's mostly walking. We're going to be walking a lot. How about a minute? Five hours remain. 
Clark heads out to Lupe. Yabby, yabby, yabby. Yo, 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 bye-bye. See you in a couple hours. I need to check out. Okay, gotcha. The downhills are going great. The uphills, you know, the minute I have to engage the quadricep, it says, ooh, I don't like that. <laughs> so, Would we'll you ready to back out, eh? I think so. We got, I can do that in four hours, hopefully. All right, good luck. <laughs> Thanks. The race seemingly well in hand for Graywall. At 11.54 a.m., he's on Loop 9, headed back to Montezuma. Colleen Inkin, second place for the women, goes out on Loop 7 to tackle the trails there. Um, I can come down to your station with you. Okay. Oh, this next one, just, it's just brutal, this whole thing, you know? Here they're going straight up or straight down, and I'm, just, I'm actually recovering all right, which is nice. It's not all brutal? Uh, some of the smooth sections are nice. Rishi Graywall still on a record pace for Montezuma's revenge. The brutal battle comes to an end. We return. The churning pedals and wheels of Rishi Graywall, the leader in the 2001 Montezuma's Revenge on Loop 11, already at a record pace. Behind him, now only 15 minutes behind, David Pickett heaps in a dispute over route finding. Not the map I looked at, not the map you showed me. You're going to have to wait your minute. Together on he did the loop backwards. All right, so don't worry about it. We'll talk about it later. They've got guys on. They got guys on. Okay. Oh, Whatever uh, he did, you picked up so much. Don't worry. You got him. He's 15 minutes in front of you. You worry about yourself. You get him. You go and get him. Show him you're the man, Dave. You didn't come here to get second. Get on your bike. Manager. Team minutes behind Rishi Graywall. Basically, we didn't come here to lose. <laughs> we came here to win. And his feet made up 20 minutes on the last loop. He made up 15 minutes on this loop. If Rishi's 15 minutes in front of him, he's going to get him. Graywall and Pickett Heaps, not the only riders pushing hard. Dawes Wilson regains third place, passing Todd Murray on loop nine. Wilson, like Murray, has accumulated 130 miles to this point and 21,060 vertical feet. The 38-year-old Murray offers kudos to the 48-year-old Wilson. Well, he, he was packing his bike at the top here, and we were just pushing, so he had to reassemble his bike and put his shoes on. <laughs> but he caught me at the bottom of the gulch. So. He wants it more than I do today. He's strong. Yeah. He's stronger than I am anyhow. You sure I can't get you something, man? No. Some grapes? Nothing? I got an hour left. You got an hour and ten minutes left. Yeah, I'm going to head down into... Okay, you got 15 seconds and you're ready. Zoom in. Sure Let's you're start. feeling good? Do you need water or anything? Nope. 2.47 p.m. On loop eight, Michelle Granger in first place. Victory well in hand. Colleen Inken well back. Yeah, I'm done. I'm, I've had a great time. I'm proud of what I did, and I'm happy. Um, I just don't think I can make it all the way up there right now. <laughs> so, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. I'm done. Four o'clock. Another stick of dynamite sounds the end of the 2001 Montezuma's Revenge. The women's champion, Michelle Granger, with a new women's record. That's after three sips of beer. Just wait till we get down to the bottom. <laughs> the celebration is amplified as Granger comes back to town to her hero's welcome. It's really nice to see, to put a crew together, 
have them train with you, have them take their summer to train with you, to come up here all the time, to have all the support of the townspeople. I mean, that's to me incredible. I wouldn't keep coming back for that if it wasn't for that reason. And then to just spend eight weeks totally focused on this event, <laughs> only this event. I mean, I'm lucky I still have friends left. <laughs> The revelry grows as the elder statesman of the race, Dawes Wilson, returns to town in third place. Uh, fatigue is not much emotion, just fatigue and pain. My feet hurt, my arms hurt, my hands hurt. Uh, I just want to lie down. How about the set? Oh, I'm just tired, just exhausted. That's all. Glad it's over. Oh, thanks. Then at 4.15, after nearly 152 miles, 27,972 vertical feet gained, the new champion, Rishi Graywall, accepts his congratulations. It was a tough race for me. I went out there and, and went a lot further, probably about 40 minutes further, maybe more, actually more than that, probably an hour further and set a new record, which was, you know, it, it was great. Um, it's it's such a difficult event to put into words. Uh, coming down the last downhill, you know, I almost got tears in my eyes because it's just so hard. It's just so, and it takes so much effort and so much preparation, but that's the beauty of the event is that, you know, you can go out and, and put all that effort into it and come out on, on top at the end, which I'm, I'm happy happened, I can tell you that, because uh, there was a lot of hours of battling. The final standings of the 15th Montezuma's Revenge. Rishi Graywall with his second championship over a former champion, David Pickett Heaps. For the women, Michelle Granger captures her first title. The 2001 Montezuma's Revenge in and around Montezuma, Colorado has been brought to you by Paul Mitchell, the style in lifestyle sports. By New Belgian Brewing Company, brewers of fat tire. And go over the bar with handlebarandgrill.com. Congratulations to the winners for the 2001 Montezuma's Revenge. Both record setting. Show! Yay! Show! <laughs> Voted the world's worst race, the most grueling on the planet, with a payoff as simple as a sunrise over a mountain for the accomplishment of finishing 24 hours. Always good to have someone push him, and not only you, but David. That's right.